Well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I'm so glad that uh, you can join me today here live from Sydney. I am uh, in my surfer type gear, although I don't need to hit the ocean and grab a surfboard to get wet. It has been raining non-stop here in Sydney. Uh, if you are on location, you probably already know this. Um, the rain has been coming down non-stop for the last three days. It has been wet and dreary and I'm sure there's probably some uh, stand-up paddle boarders making their way down a lot of the streets because we don't actually need to hit the ocean or the waves uh, with the current conditions the way they are. So despite that, I'm in a lot of my standard workout gear because it's quick dry. I can still walk my way down to Bondi Beach, which is on East Sydney. It is, uh, I'm approximately a 10 minute walk away from Bondi. So if anybody is uh, in the area, I would love for you to come join me afterwards. Let's go for a pizza and a coffee. <laughs> as I go ahead continue to do some writing. Uh, I'm so glad. I The last week I've had a lot of people join me in Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. It has been unbelievable. I have an event coming up shortly on actually tomorrow, uh, January 7th here in Sydney. It will be at Knox uh, Bar and uh, Street Bar and Tavern. It's a very, very small and intimate venue. I hope many of you can make it. Uh, there aren't a lot of tickets left, so if you haven't bought your tickets yet, please go to kimorleski.com. It will be a 45 minute talk. I will talk a lot about the history of everything that I've been doing. It's, uh, if you're not familiar with my story, I'll let you know. I love to tell a little bit more about it. Uh, approximately two years ago, I was working as a corporate sales executive and I was searching for happiness in all the wrong places. I thought if I would be buying more items, if I would take the nicer vacations, if I would go ahead and buy the proper bottles of wine, eventually I could find happiness in all those places and I really had the perfect life when you look at it. And what happened was I realized that this is not what I ever imagined myself to be. And in one very fast movement, because I am a fast moving girl, <laughs> I decided to go ahead and sell my house and travel the world. And I grabbed a backpack and went ahead by myself to 17 countries on four different, uh, <laughs> on four different continents. And it was a wonderful trip. It was life changing because what I realized was it wasn't so much the trip that was life-changing because I was consistently looking for other things but as I started to release what I had already planned for my life I realized that there was so many more opportunities and what was really going to bring me fulfillment to my life was actually being able to help other people find what they're looking for in their lives. So when I came back home, I took some coaching courses. I continued to write. I'm a weekly blogger. If you're not already a subscriber to my uh, blog, please, please look at and joining the subscribers list. Uh, you'll get the email right into your blog every single, or my newsletter blog will go right into your inbox every single week. And you can go ahead and continue to keep up the conversation that way. I have events coming up all over. Um, oh, hello, Nigel. <laughs> yes, I will say hi to you. <laughs> he is a longtime friend from university. Uh, I don't want to say that long because then that will age us. But, <laughs> but so, yeah, so I'm so excited um, for those of you that have already been subscribing, that are readers that are joining me on these weekly conversations. I'm usually in the evening, I'm back home in Calgary, it would be 7 p.m. there, and I'd be typically drinking a glass of wine. Uh, because it's 1 p.m. here in Sydney on Wednesday afternoon, I am finishing up a cup of uh, powder cappuccino. I don't even know if that really counts. I really don't feel like I'm that caffeinated, so I will be hitting a coffee shop afterwards. And so today we are going to be discussing my latest blog post. I was so fortunate this year. My family is incredibly gracious and when I told them that I wanted to go away over the Christmas and New Year's and be away from family, 
that is often such a difficult thing to do. And they said, no, absolutely, you take care of yourself and you do what you need to do. And on New Christmas Eve, I flew down to New Zealand, down to Auckland and spent about five days in the Auckland area. Uh, I'm a Canadian, yeah, uh, Midwestern Canadian. So it does sound quite almost California-ish, I think. And so I spent five days in the Auckland area, uh, going, starting in Auckland, driving down to Raglan, which is known for, if there's some big surfers out there, it's known for some epic surfing. Uh, it has a tide that kind of comes along, and it's, I think they said it, it moves in the opposite direction, which makes it very difficult, but the wave will actually move um, for kilometers. And so they'll have surfing competitions out there and you'll actually be able to see the surfers that will actually be able to travel entire kilometers in, term, in their surf. So it's quite good. Uh, not in New Zealand, um, not, uh, not up to four countries. Oh good. <laughs> um, I'm at, I think, 23 or 24 now. So tell me, tell me if you're still up on four. <laughs> And so anyway, I went ahead, I hired myself a, I thought he was New Zealander, he had been there for long enough that he actually switched his accent a little bit, he's originally from the UK, he moved to Auckland uh, I think 10 years before that, so I hired him to be my instructor that day. And I hadn't gone surfing in over a year. The last time I went was uh, last January, so it would have been January 2015. My girlfriend and I, we headed off to Tamarindo, Costa Rica. Uh, it's right on the west coast. And it's quite funny, I've only ever actually, now that I think about it, I've only ever surfed the Pacific Ocean. I've never actually surfed anywhere along the Atlantic or the Caribbean, so I'll have to you know, make that my next stop. <laughs> so the last time I went surfing was uh, Tamarindo a year before that in Costa Rica. Beautiful surfing, highly recommended, very easy, especially for a beginner. And I was hungry for surfing. I needed to, surfing is my sport and I really don't need to be living in the prairies because I do not like snowboarding or skiing. <laughs> I'm a terrible Canadian in that respect. And so when I hired the gentleman to take me out surfing, we wetsuited up. There, are, He says there's no sharks in New Zealand and I haven't seen them. Apparently there was a few not too long ago in the southern eastern part of Australia. So we grabbed a board, headed out there. And I'm swimming, and I am. Uh, you have to, if you haven't surfed before, and even those that have, you have to lay down on the, the, you make yourself out as far as you can. You lay down on the board, and you just start paddling, and you paddle as far as you can into the ocean. And you wait for the wave to start churning, and you, you hop up on your board in this kind of weird duck like motion. And you move yourself around so that you're facing the beach again. And you can either sit, or you can just stay laying down, and you wait for the waves to kind of come and start to crest and what you want to catch is they call it the green wave and it's right before it actually crests from green to white uh, because that's where the most amount of motion goes as soon as though the wave starts cresting white you lose all of that momentum and it really can't get you too much further there's not not much more pressure to help lift you up and to take you into the surf so I went ahead and, you know, I'm, I'm swimming and I mean, we were out there for hours and I still hadn't caught a wave yet and I was trying not to get too upset with myself because I don't go surfing enough in order to get upset with myself and that was some of the forgiveness that I had to give because especially if you're new to a sport, I see this with golfers, with snowboarders, they often will want to try to be really, really good, especially if they like the sport. They want to be really good, really fast. And when you don't practice it enough, you do have to give yourself forgiveness. That because last January, when I was able to get up on the board and you know surf myself, you know several times, and this time around I just couldn't do it. I had to give myself forgiveness. But what I learned throughout that process is what I wrote on my last blog. So it was a nice one for me because I like every now and then to spin it a little bit more fun, a little bit still business oriented, still like lesson oriented, inspirational. And at the same time, I like to, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, every now and then I, I see little tweets and I need to, to just go ahead and check it out. Uh, uh, I go ahead and I, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I, I like to write some fun blog posts every now and then because especially if there's any other bloggers or writers out there, when you typically write a lot of material and it becomes, it goes from something fun to something that becomes your job and then all of a sudden you kind of lose the fun out of it. Every now and then we need to put a fun piece out there, right? Something that's totally, we should always be writing for just ourselves or maybe one other person. And every now and then we need to write something that we could care less how many hits it gets because it really brings the fun and the creativity and the excitement back into writing again. And so that was this piece for me, was right after I had finished surfing, I wanted to write all about that experience and all about, you know, the motions of going through this slow transition into catching a wave, especially for those that are either A, never surfed before, maybe they want to try it, or B, maybe they are hardcore surfers and they forgot what it was like to actually break down the steps. It becomes so automatic that when you have somebody brand new and they're telling you they take a two second literal window and they're actually breaking it down into a couple hundred words, you remember that there is that slow motion to it and it's this rhythm. So I went ahead, I wrote that and it still felt incomplete and I wanted to actually associate some life lessons to the entire process and that's why I decided to say you know, what surfing taught me about commitment and about actually being committed to the process, being knowing that you want it, knowing that you don't, you want it, but you can't have, want it so bad that you start to make mistakes and that you start to not look at it from the outside anymore. When I was wanting that surf, that wave every single time, I was jumping up on the board before I even had my footing or my foundation set up and I was making these massive mistakes. I wasn't able to actually get my feet appropriate and of course when you stand up too quickly you tumble off the board. So it was a long process, uh, it was a very fun experience for me and here I am in Sydney, I'm in Bondi, also known for some of the most exciting surfing that you could possibly find in Sydney and it has rained, rained for three days straight. It's to the point where I don't even want to go outside anymore. I have lost two umbrellas in two days <laughs> due to wind gusts that come every now and then. Granted, they're very cheap umbrellas and I promise myself the next store that I stop in and see some actual pricey, well-constructed umbrellas, I am buying myself one. But they're hard, so hard to manage when you have a suitcase that's only so big. You don't want to buy an overall big umbrella. You want to buy something that's maybe a little bit more compact, but the compact ones don't have the strength the way the larger ones do. So I will be uh, having to bear the storm fairly soon. I am probably feeling a little bit delirious right now. I was actually up incredibly early. Uh, even though I'm on vacation, I'm still technically working. And I say vacation, uh, the nice thing about the life that I've built for myself now is that I have the freedom to do this wherever I want in the world. I can be in Sydney and still be meeting with clients and sending emails and managing my social media and having these conversations with you today. I can be back home uh, where things are a little bit easier, but even home is a relative place to be. It can be Calgary or Vancouver or anywhere else in Canada as I see fit. And, and where the ideal would be is, you know, eventually I'll be doing, you know, a few months here, Europe, Australia, wherever else that it needs to be. So we have a choir group today. It's, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, love, I, I love the process of doing this and I'm so happy that, you know, we get to join each other. Um, as often as we do, and maybe it's because of the location basis. Uh, I would typically, a couple weeks ago, I think we did this, and the role was going constantly with questions. And I would love to answer any questions that you may have at this point. I, I've pretty much kind of gone through what I needed to. I wanted to make this one a shorter one. I usually do 30 minutes, 
and I would like to do this one just a little bit shorter because it's still my personal time and it's past lunch and I'm hungry. I can go for a pizza right now. So if anyone is in the Bondi area and can reckon, uh, recommend a good pizza place, maybe with some proper cappuccinos, not this powder cappuccino that I'm currently drinking right now, I would absolutely love this. Uh, on going forward, some of the things that we have planned, uh, I will be releasing my second book. I had I received a cover proof for it like, the other day. That's how to be a nomad. It teaches you how to do exactly what I did, where it was quit your life and go traveling around the world. So that will be released in the next month. Uh, I guess it depends. I have one more. Actually, I realized I submitted it to my publisher and I forgot a chapter on jet lag which is incredibly important. So I wanna cover that. Uh, I do have an event, as I said, tomorrow here in Sydney. I am so excited. It's a very small venue. It will be video recorded. Uh, it will be submitted to the TEDx uh, YYC people, which is based in Calgary, Canada. I'm so thrilled for those of you that will be able to join me for that. We'll be talking about just changing your mind and changing your life. And it will be the theory that you should change your mind quite often. Uh, oftentimes, we get to a point where we become comfortable with what we do. We become comfortable with our career, with what we are having, and we forget to reflect that, is this still serving me in the highest possible way? And we become good. That's the problem, is when you become good and the money starts coming, that to think about leaving and starting a brand new career, not a brand new company, but a brand new career is so difficult to make and we don't even want to consider or play with that. And I am a motivational speaker. Yes, I am. I'm having an event in Sydney tomorrow. I'll be having one in Calgary, Canada on February 2nd. And I've been asked to speak for another event on February 11th. And I would like to do some additional uh, venues. I, I've been asked to come to London and a few different places in the States as well. So I would like to you know, start nailing those dates down. And the event tomorrow, though, we're going to be covering that idea. So I don't know how many of you know the story about the, it's called the Monty Hall theory. And it's a mathematical, it's, it has been raining in Sydney all week. This is what I'm telling everybody. I'm like, this is why you need to come to my event because there's finally something to do. It is a small venue. It's at Knox, uh, Knox Bar Street, Knox Street Bar. It's a really cute little corner. It's coffee shop by day, bar by night, super intimate, and it's exactly the audience that I was going for for this. Um, it doesn't look, on the internet, it doesn't give it nearly the appeal as when you walk in person and you realize that it is a, a very intimate place. Uh, it will probably be, I'm hoping, I maxed out the tickets at um, 30 people. I don't want any more than that to this event um, because I want it to still be a private party and that was the whole goal is I want to be able to have this conversation uh, not yet but pretty soon how about that uh, I want to be able to still have the conversation but I don't want it to be your typical motivational speaker where I'm up on stage and rah 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 we get you all pumped and then I run off on stage this is my second time in Sydney and I love it here it's actually my absolute favorite city in the whole wide world and so I said let's make it a private party let's have you know I can go ahead let's mingle with everybody at the very beginning I will do a 45 minute talk and afterwards let's all sit around let's chat let's create a community let's see you know what was resonating with you what wasn't because if I just go ahead and spiel off a whole bunch of content and I don't actually get the feedback Right? I, I want to say some controversial stuff. I want you guys to, I want everybody to say it worked for me, it didn't. What did you think of this? This is what I want to do with my life. Because it's not the talk specifically that I'm after. It's the opportunity to connect with all the people that want to do something more with their lives and they're just not really sure on how to do it. So going back to the original idea on the Monty Hall, it's called the Monty Hall Theory. And Monty Hall was a game show host back in the 70s. He had this show called Let's Make a Deal. And the whole idea behind this, and we'll go through this at the top, 
but he would give you three doors. Behind two goat doors, there was a goat, and behind the third door, there was a car. And he'd say, pick any one of the three doors. And so somebody would go ahead, oh, I'd pick door A. And he's like, okay, you know, he's like, so we'll open up, you know, one of the doors that contains the goat. And he's like, so now that you know that it's either your door or another door that contains the car or a goat, what would you rather choose? And most people say, well, I'm going to stick with my door. And that's actually the wrong thing to do. You increase your odds double by switching doors immediately. And it doesn't make sense because when you first choose your door, you have a third, a third, a third of getting the, the answer right. And when you eliminate one of the doors, people think, well, now I still have a 50-50 chance. And that's not the right, that's not the right answer. You had a third chance with the door you originally picked, and you have a 50-50 chance with the second one. So it's actually better to always switch your mind. And if that works for cars and goats, let's imagine what that could possibly do for your entire life. If you were changing your mind as new information was being brought forward, not saying, this already works for me, I don't need to look at something different. If we could constantly change our mind, and everything as simple as, choosing a new restaurant to go to, you know, trying a new hobby. But every now and then, let's do a big change. Let's try living in a brand new city. Let's try taking on a brand new career path. Let's go on a travel sabbatical. Those are the things that are gonna improve your life. And it's not just where it's gonna take you because the wonderful thing is you can always go back. You can always, if you choose to live in Sydney over London, you can always move back to London. You're not stuck in Sydney. If you choose to quit your job to take a travel sabbatical and three months in, you decide that it's not actually what you want to do, you can always fly back, maybe ask for your job back, or here's the other one, you can actually get an even better job because now you have world experience. You have experience that says you were able to try something out of the norm. Um, if you had a degree, but you think medical school might be a good choice for you, choose medical school. If you want to do medical school, go for it. Why not? I have met I have met some amazing career transitional people in my life. Uh, the other day, actually, I met a former dental hygienist turned accountant. Okay, and it's not the same as going from an engineering or perhaps a business degree to medical school. But that being said, I did once meet a gentleman who went from an IT background and he went back to law school. So he just said, it's something else that I want to try. And how cool is that? It doesn't make him any less when he ever, if he ever couldn't make it as a doctor if he decided this actually wasn't for me. It would actually enhance his experience and change things even for the better. So, that's the theory, is go ahead and continue to try, continue to experience. Because you only regret the things that you didn't do, not the things that you did. And when you look at you know, what it would take to take a travel sabbatical to go back to medical school, and let's assume that you know if this was the length of your life, the entire life, yes, money, <laughs> money is always an issue, <laughs> but we'll get to that in a second as well. So if this was the entire length of your life, and you said, you know, I need to go to medical school, it's gonna take three years, right? Three years in the grand scheme of your entire life is like a finger width. It's not a very long time. And when we look forward six months, a year, three years, look to be so significant. And when we look backwards, we realize high school, which was a three year period of time as well, it flew by like that. And so to make these decisions based on the amount of uh, length of time that it's gonna take us is an incredibly silly thing to really judge it upon. Because you're looking not necessarily at what's going forward, but the opportunity cost of not going forward. You know, what happens if in three years you're still stuck and you're still wishing, had I only started that day, right? There's a, Chinese proverb and it says there's two times to build uh, the best time to plant a tree and they said the first time was 20 years ago and the second time is today right and as long as you make that decision but make it 
and decide and commit to that with all of your heart. You know, if that's what you want to do, don't be waffling. Your entire life will know and it feels those vibrations that you're not completely satisfied in what you want to do. But when you decide and you've moved all your conviction into that direction, that's when the universe starts to open up for you and that's where things go. So money, let's go to that topic. Because yes, <laughs> medical school will be very expensive. It's, uh, and I don't know where you're from. I think you said the States, you might be from America. I mean, there are student loan options, there are saving options, there might be scholarships and bursaries. Uh, Boston. Okay, well, wonder, I haven't been to Boston yet. Um, so, I mean, there's probably a lot of different options. Um, you can talk to, I'm trying to think of some ideas for you here. Um, there's ways of getting around these types of things. But if you took a degree to begin with, unless you paid for it in cash or your parents paid for it or some other thing that you never actually had to take a student loan, you never look back and say, I wish I would have been paying that student loan, especially as a doctor, because you're so well needed in the field. You're gonna be able to find a job like that. Um, if you're still flip-flopping, I am from Canada, yes. If you're still flip-flopping, if this isn't right for you, uh, the best thing to possibly do is start reaching out to people that are already in your field or where you want to go. LinkedIn, nobody is using LinkedIn to the way that it needs to be used and it is a wonderful tool. You can go ahead and search for any job title by any location and you send these people requests and they will, as long as your profile looks legit, you have a profile picture, you have a little bit of background, people are going to accept your requests. And what you possibly could do is send them off a little message, letting them know, I looked at your profile, I'm interested in medical school, can I you know, just take a few minutes of your time, a phone call, a coffee, whatever it is, and let me know in hindsight what you wish you would have told your younger self before making that decision. The more information you gain, especially making a really large decision like that, the more comfortable you're gonna feel when you finally decide to take that leap of faith. And let them know, honestly, what your fears are. If your fear is, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money, they might know people or they might know the scholarships. They might know, like, you know, this is what I did and da, 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 da. And all of a sudden, doors are opening where you had no idea that they were there before. And you're going to have, it's going to be so wonderful. You're going to be overwhelmed with the graciousness of people that are going to approach you back when you actually ask them that this is what you want to do. And you, you're already going to be head and feet above everybody else when eventually you get to that point where you're doing your residency because you already know the doctors. So <laughs> you're buddies with them. You know? So imagine what that's going to do for your entire life. <laughs> So I hope that helped out. I'm, I'm very excited to see where you're going to take with your possibilities. Uh, I would love to hear, you know, I mean, keep in touch with me. Uh, keep watching. I do this Periscope show weekly. I do, I also do my blog posts. So I post my blog every Monday, uh, Monday North American time. It came day late because I'm in Sydney today. But I post my blogs every Monday. If you're a subscriber, a free subscri subscription to my email list and you will get the blog directly into your web content. I do the Periscope the following day to talk a little bit about the blog posts, but I also want to offer some life coaching services as well um, in, in the exchange of this um, because for me it's not about the value, it's not, not the money, um, I, I, don't get me wrong, we can all use money, um, but my, my greater gift is helping people and assisting them in succeeding in their greatest life. Um, that's why I'm a motivational speaker, that's why I do the writing, and this is um, why I'll be launching some e-courses later on. But this, this is my gift to, to the world, so I'm so happy to do this. Uh, we are running out of time, uh, so if there's any last questions of anybody um, for me or through this process, I would love to hear from you. I will be back in Canada on January 10th. Uh, well, absolutely. There's lots of good people out there. <laughs> and you're more than welcome to send me an email anytime, just asking for advice, telling me where your direction is. Find me. I'm, my social media is completely open. So. 
um, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook fan page. Uh, and so there's lots of ways of being able to get in touch with me and I'm always happy to, to make new friends and new connections. And that's just, it's just how it is. And I know when passion drives, um, the finances and abundance in other ways will come as well. And you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, I tell you about the things that I do. I don't want to sell you on the things that you, if you find value in where I do, you're going to buy into the rest of it. Um, but I'm so happy to, to have conversations and, you know, offer advice where, where I can. So, so that's it for me today. So thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for um, joining. Uh, please help, you know, share, spread the message, let them, everyone see what you were able to join in on today. And those of you that are in the Sydney area, I am thrilled to see you tomorrow. Please come early. I will be there just before 6.30. The event starts at 7 p.m. We can have a quick drink and a chat, and I will be sticking around for a couple hours afterwards. So if there's any life, um, life coaching questions you have or any conversations you want about motivational speaking, blogging, authoring, uh, I also am one of Success Magazine's most inspirational bloggers. I'm happy to answer all of those questions for you on how I did it because it was a change your mind, change your life moment. So thank you so much. I appreciate it.